Hey guys, it's Jeff from Pressure Luck, and I do love me my pasta soups. Mostly because they're very, very hearty, and they take the place of a whole meal. Especially when you serve it with some crusty bread, you know what I'm saying? Uh, so today we're gonna take what I love. Uh, I love a cream of mushroom soup. If you're a mushroom lover out there, I got you this time. It's basically a variation of that, but we're gonna add a little bit more to zhuzh it up, and we're gonna add some ravioli, any kind you like. We're gonna be using a really tasty one for this one. Ooh, I can't wait to show you. It's just so easy to do. It's so outrageously de delicious, and the results at the end are gonna make you feel like a gourmet, five-star, Michelin whatever chef. Although I feel a little bit like the Michelin man right now, but you're gonna love it. If you love mushrooms, if you love ravioli, you're gonna love truffle ravioli soup. So we're gonna do it right in the Instant Pot very, very quickly, very, very easily, very, very hassle-free. Let's go. So the very first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add in four tablespoons, which is equivalent to a half a stick of salted butter, which is also equivalent to a half a cup. And then we're gonna melt that in the pot. Now we'll come down to the control panel, hit the saute button, make sure we're on the more or the high setting, hit the start button if your model has one. If it doesn't, it'll start after a few moments of doing nothing. All right, and once the butter's all melted and bubbling, I wanna add one yellow onion that's just diced up. And I'm gonna saute the onion for about, just about a minute or two. I just want it to get a little bit softened up here, very, very minimally. All right, and after about a minute of our onion sauteing in the pot, it's time to add in our shrooms, or mushrooms. Use edible, well, use mushrooms you'd get in the supermarket, all right? The other stuff's gonna give you something else, I'll tell you that. Uh, I'm using two pounds, and I'm using all sliced mushrooms. You can use whatever kind you want. Uh, two pounds though, 32 ounces. And I'm using a half a mix of uh, baby bella mushrooms and this white button mushrooms, all sliced. Add that to the pot. And we're gonna saute our mushrooms in the pot for about another five minutes until all the mushrooms get a bit browned and cooked down a bit. So far it's very similar to my cream of mushroom soup, but there will be a drastic difference at the end. Make sure you really saute and stir all the mushrooms. Flip them around with the spatula so they get nice and coated in that butter. And this is why I like to use a wooden spatula as my main mixing tool with most of my recipes, because it's really easy to just get in there. Things don't stay in some sort of groove like a spoon. And you can just really just toss and stir everything around very simply. Mushrooms take a few minutes to begin to sweat and release their juices. And once they do, that's when they become super, super flavorful and extra delicious. They get nice and soft and buttery and just really fantastic. The consistency truly goes from a more firm, chalky type bite to one that's really smooth and buttery. Even if you're not cooking them in butter, they become like buttery. Oil will give it the same effect. As will wine, of course. And we will be adding some wine. Oh yes, we will. All right, and after about three or so minutes, you're gonna see that the mushrooms are gonna really have slicked up, softened a bunch, released some liquids. That's a good thing. Make sure you deglaze the bottom of the pot a little bit as we're sauteing because mushrooms tend to like to stick to the bottom. You see that? Don't worry, that's all gonna come up in a moment. And now to add a final member into this veggie jacuzzi, I'm going to add in six cloves, or two tablespoons, about three cloves equals one tablespoon, of crushed minced or pressed garlic. You can do it yourself, or you can just use the kind from the jar. It'll be fine. I'm not gonna tell. It's amazing how much the mushrooms really do cook down, and they soften very fast. Okay, and we're looking great. Now look at how much liquid's in the pot now from the mushroom sauteing. Look at that. It's pretty crazy. All right, now I was mentioning wine, so now it's time to add liquids, even though we have some delicious mushroom juice here, or, or broth. And you can see you could even begin to deglaze it from their own juices, or you can deglaze it even easier when we add our next ingredients, and that's going to be wine. Yes, this soup is going to have a fantastic wine element to it. I am using a half a cup each, so a cup total, of sherry wine, and Marsala wine, and I prefer to use sweet to dry in this soup, but you can absolutely use dry, that's fine. The sweet just gives it a, exactly what you would think, a sweeter edge. And we're gonna just stir the pot and really deglaze the bottom, make sure that any of the stuck brown bits from when the mushrooms are sauteing are now free and clear and gone. And we're gonna let this come to a bubble for just a moment. Okay, perfect. And now it wouldn't be a soup without some broth. I'm using four cups of broth, you can use any broth of your choice. I use 
mushroom broth. I use better than bouillon mushroom base, which is uh, four teaspoons of the base plus four cups of water equal four cups of the broth, but you can use any kind of broth you wish. And let's lastly season this up with a two teaspoons of Italian seasoning. And now I'm just gonna give everything a stir in the pot and then we're gonna pressure cook. Put my lid on top, there you go. Make sure we're in the ceiling position. Now we'll come back down to the control panel, we'll hit the cancel button, there you are. And then we're gonna hit that pressure cook button and we wanna go for five minutes at high pressure, that's it. And now that we're done pressure cooking, we'll perform a quick release. All right, the pin just dropped, you know what that means. Soup's up. Okay, the next thing I wanna do here, because we're gonna puree, which is super fun, we'll get to that in a second, is I wanna reserve some of these mushrooms. So I wanna use a slotted spoon here, and I wanna take a measuring cup and add about one and a half cups of these mushrooms. Fill it up to the one and a half cup line, all right? You can go even a little bit more if you want, but you wanna make sure you still have plenty of mushrooms in there to puree. That's important. Perfect, one and a half cups of that delicious softened mushroom reserved. The rest are about to become blended into oblivion. Because guess what I love to use? You, I've, you've known me before to say this, and I'll say it as the day is long, even though the days are shorter this time of year. I'll keep saying it through the night. An immersion blender. These things are so important. Here it is. It's like a long stick. It's also known as a stick blender. To puree, forget taking this in batches, putting it in the blender. About four or five times you're gonna have to do that because you can't fill a blender all the way to the top. You gotta do it only like halfway because when it blends, it goes all over the place. So trust me on this, you need an immersion blender. They're super cheap, super affordable, and sometimes they come with a whisk attachment so you can whisk things up. Sometimes you can froth milk, multi-purpose. See how this works? There's a little blade underneath. Be careful, don't touch that. When you turn it on, it just goes really fast and it's just gonna blend everything. So put it inside and blend. All right, and after about a minute or so of doing that, we are good to go. All right, the next thing I wanna do is I wanna give my pot some heat again and bring it to a bubble. Back down to the cancel button, and then hit that saute button again, again at high. And then while the pot is coming to a uh, bubbling temperature, I wanna add in one cup of heavy cream. You can also use half and half. You can also use a non-dairy milk. And if you wanna go the dairy-free route, you can absolutely use olive oil instead of the butter to begin with. Just use uh, about a, a third of a cup or so, or even up to a half a cup is fine. That's fine. Or you can use margarine even. And give that a good stir. All right, so we have this nice creamy, mushroomy broth in here again. Not unlike my cream of mushroom soup. But it's about to change because now our key ingredient is to add in that ravioli. You can use really any size. This is like your, you know, like standard size ravioli. It's not square, it's more of a crescent shape, but you can use a mini ravioli, you can also use tortellini, and you can use any type you want. This one happens to be stuffed with Italian sausage. It's like this Rana brand. They have a Costco. You can also use Buitoni brand. You can use any brand that you find in the supermarket that's refrigerated. Try not to get frozen. You can use frozen, I guess, if you want. It'll take a little longer, but get the kind that's refrigerated. This was on sale at Costco, and it's Italian sausage, but you can use mushroom, cheese, whatever you want. Chicken, doesn't make a difference. I am using about uh, just a little over a pound of this. It depends on the size of bags that are sold or the, the pouches, but you can use really between one to one and a half pounds worth of the pasta. All right, you see we're beginning to come to a bubble. That's perfect. Now what I wanna do is I wanna add that pasta to the soup. It's gonna only gonna take about four or so minutes. We're gonna leave this in there. That'll do the trick. Since the pasta's not dry, it's gonna cook much more quickly. And after about four minutes of that ravioli cooking inside of the soup, it's gonna be ready to go. In the meantime, let's put on those final touches. I wanna add in between three quarters of a cup to a cup of grated Parmesan cheese. We could also use Pecorino Romano. Parmesan's from a cow, Pecorino Romano is from a sheep. Pecorino Romano is also, I think, a little bit saltier in terms of flavor, and I, I love both of them. And I also wanna add back my reserved mushrooms. You could save a few extra ones also for topping at the very end if you wish, for garnish. And we're gonna stir this up in the soup. Now at this point, give your soup a little taste. It, when you taste it, you're gonna decide the following. You can add between one to two teaspoons of seasoned salt. If you feel like it could use a little bit more, that's up to you. I'm adding just a little bit more. I would suggest just using one teaspoon, as well as our final finishing touch ingredient, some truffle oil. You can use white or black. 
You don't have to use fancy stuff. And you're gonna start with one tablespoon and you could add more to taste. In the meantime, I'm gonna kill the heat on this pot. And then you're just gonna stir in that truffle oil. And again, at this point, give it a little taste and decide if you wanna add more truffle oil. I personally wanna use two tablespoons, but that's completely up to you. And we could also drizzle some on the very end for some garnish. All right, and there we have it. Our fantastic truffle ravioli soup. And now what I wanna do is just ladle some into some bowls. There's my bowl, I'm gonna name it Sally. If you get the reference, good on you. We could be good friends. I suggest using a larger sized shallow bowl for this. Get it in there, get some ravioli. And then of course, get your broth. You don't wanna skimp on the ravioli, I mean, come on. It's kind of the point of this dish, right? To me, it's like really just like a soupy ravioli. Maybe you wanna add some of those reserved mushrooms now. Give it a nice finishing touch. Look at that, how pretty. Maybe a little bit more Parmesan on there. Just a few sprinkles of it. And a little final drizzle of truffle oil. And now it is time to eat. And hoo hoo hoo, there it is. Uh, truffle ravioli soup, it's a big bowl. Uh, all right, let's try this out. I am very excited about it. I am very excited. There we go. Uh, they're big ravioli, and you could, like I said, use any size, but. Okay. Mmm. Mmm. Okay, first off, the raviolis themselves are delicious. That Italian sausage one from Costco, the Rana brand, yes! The soup. It, it, it. If you like my cream of mushroom soup, just wait until you try this one. This one is like next level cream of mushroom soup because it has not only does it have the ravioli, but it has the truffle oil. And it has the Parmesan elements to it. And that Marsala and sherry wine base. It goes real, real nice with it. I'm not going on some sort of trip here, but I'm definitely going on some sort of culinary trip because this is banging delicious. This is an incredibly hearty meal. This is a soup that is a meal because of the ravioli in it. And also I love having a meat ravioli in here because it adds an element of meat to the dish. Nice touch. Mmm. Mushrooms melt in your mouth. It's just, everything going on in here is just right. It's just happiness. It's like Goldilocks, just right. right. Do I have anything in my facial hair? Because the last two videos I didn't notice until after. I'm looking at a very small screen when I film this. It's hard for me to tell until of course I put the memory card into the computer and just the footage and I'm like, okay, there's a huge glob of food in my face. The perfect, perfect cold weather meal. Serve this with some crusty bread, whether it be a cheese toast, garlic bread, French bread, a baguette, multigrain, whatever you wanna do. I know a lot of you picked up some really good bread making tips during the pandemic. And now if you enjoy recipes like this that are super easy, yes, pun definitely intended there, uh, check me out on facebook.com slash cooking. Make sure you like the page because anytime a new recipe comes out, you're gonna see it there. And my recipes live at pressurelockcooking.com where you're gonna find uh, so many recipes, it's crazy for free, you can print them and everything. I'm, I like that, it's, I, because I like you so much. And if cookbooks are your game, oh boy, do I have some treats for you. I have the orange one, the original one, came out in 2020, the blue one, the lighter book, which came out in 2021, and the yellow one, the comfort food book, which came out in 2022, and the next one coming out is the green one, the shortcut book, coming out in April of 2023. They're all instant pot recipe books. Jumping on that bag wagon and running it out as long as I can. And you're not gonna wanna miss that one, my friends. You are really not gonna wanna miss that one. But all the recipes couldn't be easier. Just look at this. Beautiful color step-by-step -step photos with a finished shot for every single recipe. You're not gonna guess what this should, what should this look like? Because it's gonna show you what it should look like. And there's a timing bar telling you exactly how long pretty much every recipe should take. Hey, thank you so much again for watching. And the next time you wanna make dinner and you want something new to the shuffle, grab some mushrooms, ravioli, and then make some soup with some truffle. <laughs> well, the truffle oil, the truffles are really expensive. You don't have to deal with that, trust me. I'm not, I'm not sending you to make buy truffles. Enjoy. Mm. Yes.